Hello and welcome to another Living My Boost Life video. In this one, I'm going to be working on the comma. Let me explain that in just a moment. So this is a very turbulent time in Minor Arena's life. And one of the things which we have to contend with at the minute is a house move. So currently, me and Rowena live in the southwest of England. We both moved here for work over 10 years ago, and we've never left. We both love it here. So the setup we currently have is a house, and then a few miles away, there's this barn. Uh, I rent this off a uh, farmer, and uh, I absolutely love it. My biggest complaint about it is it's not in my back garden. So I won't go into too much more detail other than that. You'll see in the future very soon. But the long and short of it is, the house move, we need a van to move some of the stuff. Basically, we've got a removals company moving the majority of stuff, but there's a few things they won't put in the lorry, a few flammable things like a petrol lawnmower and this big trough at the front of the house, which Rowena's put plants in. Uh, it probably weighs about 500 kilos, and it's going to go in the back of one of the vans. Originally, it was going to go in the UAS. The UAS is an all-round tougher vehicle than the Karma, it's a good 500 kilos heavier, but it, it isn't going to be done in time, basically. Uh, I'm still thrashing away on the wiring loom, and uh, like I've got absolutely no provision for operating the clutch at the minute. It was mechanical push rod clutch originally. I don't think I can get that to work, so it would have to be hydraulic, so I'd have to make a master and a slave system all from scratch. The prop angle is quite extreme. So I don't even know if that's going to work. I, the radiator's not plumbed in. The throttle is not worked out yet. It's too much work to do on it. I'm still going to be thrashing away on it in the hope of getting it done. But the comma's going to have to step up. First things first, let's get the 9000 in here to act as a tug and pull the UAS off the ramp. hasn't been outside for quite a while it still looks absolutely amazing one thing I am quite pleased with so I was quite concerned that the gearbox was going to hang underneath quite low well I don't know if this comes across well on video this thing has got probably about 40 centimeters of ground clearance I'm gonna measure it to the lowest point of the gearbox we are 13 inches or 33 centimeters. Happy with that, over a foot of ground clearance. Obviously the axles are lower, but when you crest in a hill or a mound, the, uh, I think it's called break over ground clearance maybe, that is more important than the axles. Just having a look back at some pictures on my phone because I went around measuring a few vehicles, a series Land Rover is 240 mil. Whew. Terrible. A uh, Defender is 400 mil because the gearbox cross member is totally different on them. So yeah, 330 mil. I'm happy with that. Right, I just got the comma out, and the reason I am doing some work to it is that horrendous whine. It is the fuel pump. Look at them pair. So a bit of background information about this comma. It's been on the road about a year and a half, coming up to two years now with the Saab 2.3 turbo in it. Uh, when I first put it on the road, the fuel pump was incredibly noisy, whining, and I swapped it out for another one. Uh, the one I put on was actually a higher flow pump because that's what I had kicking around, a brand new 340 aftermarket Chinese eBay thing. Put that on, it was even louder, and I was thinking, do you know what, maybe the fact that these are cheaper aftermarket parts, they're external pumps, they're bolted directly to the floor and inside is like an echo chamber because there's no interior or anything in it. Maybe that's just the way they are and I then decided to ignore the problem. Also, this thing has never performed as well as I thought it should. When I first put it on the road, the gearbox was slipping. 
I put a spare box in, the gearbox was still slipping. I rebuilt another box with upgraded friction material and a valve body for a Commodore, still slipping. And then uh, speaking to Keys in Adelaide, I think they are, in Australia, and they said, go for a manualized valve body. You get rid of any thing which may be making this slip and you'll be fine. Did that, it's got a manual valve body, the box no longer slips, happy days. That's when I realized that lack of performance is not to do with the gearbox, it's the engine. And then one day when this engine was running, I reached into the fuse box to mess with something, I can't remember what it was, but one of the fuses was red hot to touch and it was the fuel pump fuse. So lack of performance that is not gearbox related, it's to do with the engine, incredibly noisy fuel pump and that high high ampage draw on the fuel pump wiring is it anything to do with that very small inlet fuel pump adapter i made on the lathe because you can't buy one probably you absolute just editing this video and i think i need to add in this point here uh, what I've basically decided is that these fuel pumps have like a 20, 20 mil, say, inlet. And I basically put it down to 8 mil to suit the fuel tank. Uh, so basically the pump is trying to suck itself inside out, isn't it? No fuel pressure at higher RPM. Hell of a noise. High ampage draw. Yada, yada, yada. Anyway, back to the video. So I'm dropping the tank out, uh, which is an aluminium tank that Tim Comer makes for these vans. And what I'm going to do is cut an opening in the top and then I've had made up some adapters which allow you to fit in an in-tank fuel pump. Anyway, let's start a musical time lapse of me removing the fuel pump. Tank, tank pump, everything. Here is the Tim Comma Alley tank. Good piece of kit, but not suitable for what I'm after. Uh, they just have standard like 8mm uh, takeoffs for conventional like carburetor engines, but I need a little bit more than that. Not Tim's fault, of course, or my own fault, as per usual. What I'm going to do now is feed exhaust fumes from the Saab 9000 exhaust into the tank uh, to evaporate all the fuel vapor. This is a tip I saw on the skid factory uh, and basically it then makes the tank inert and not likely to blow up when you start cutting into it and welding it. So let's give it a try. <laughs> Okay, so this is the setup that I'm going to use in the tank. This is a P38 Range Rover fuel pump. This is a Walbro 255. This is a kit which allows me to fit it in the tank and electrical connection to suit the pump. So the P38 fuel pump is an in-tank pump and it looks quite easy to modify. I can't even remember where I first found out about these, uh, but this is the only the second one I've ever got and it looks ideal for modifying. Not only is it adjustable as it is, so it pushes right to the bottom of the tank, uh, you can chop these around and you can get it sitting even shorter, so for an even shallower tank. The pump inside is something feeble, like 170 litres per hour, so that's going to get removed, and in this place I've got a genuine Walbro 255 litre per hour to go in. These also have the level 
sensor built in so I can just bend that arm to suit whatever depth tank I've got it installed into. Then for the plug on the top, it's, uh, I'll post a link to what I've bought. These are like three quid or something. And then you can just, fresh terminals, run the wire into it. And then you've got electrical connections. This here is a swirl pot. If you're not sure what that is, basically tanks are big voids. Fuel injection cars get pretty fussy on as a car corners. If it picks up air, the, the engine's basically going to cut out. And it only takes like a split second of it and you get rough running. So what these have got is like a little one-way valve. That sucks fuel in. This is full and the fuel pump draws from that. And then the fuel injection return, because you always get a return line coming from the rail back to the tank, that dumps straight on top of there. And that can't go into the tank. That's got to fill up the swirl pot first. So the pump is always submerged in fuel, no matter how shallow your fuel level is. Now these I've had made them myself. You can buy stuff like this from America, but it doesn't seem like anybody sells it in the UK. Uh, it's basically to allow you to weld this to your fuel, fuel tank and then you can fit a pump inside whatever tank you've got. I've had four of these made up and I'm going to be using them all. But in the future, I wouldn't mind buying some tooling which sort of allows me to make this sort of stuff. So who knows, maybe I'll sell this sort of stuff in the future. So if you can imagine, this would be welded to the tank. The pump would sit in that. Then the above part would bolt to it, and there you have it. You have now got a swirl pot, fuel level sensor, and high flow fuel pump in any tank you desire. So I've just measured the depth of the tank, and that is coming in at 23.5 mil, 23.5 centimeters even. And as it is, the smallest I can compress this down to it in a minute is 13 and a half centimeters. So I need to take seven centimeters out of this. So time to start taking it apart. So this is the stock pump I do not need anymore, so that can go. Right, so it's this, it's these legs which are limiting how far I can compress the pump together. So I'm gonna measure them and chop them down shorter. That's 10, that's 10, screw that. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna chop a little bit off the top of this plastic so it goes up even higher. Twenty-three and a half. Actually, I'm not going to cut this spring, it looks very useful. I've already got a set of, uh, box full of springs, so I'm just going to find one which is more the right size. So there it is, I've just put a shorter spring in it. So it's got a little bit of compression, forcing the swirl pot to the bottom, and it meets the 23.5 centimetre height I need. Right, now that I'm happy with the height on it, I need to get this Warbro 255 into the swirl pot. It doesn't really come come across too well on camera, but the Warbro is a much bigger tank, a uh, much bigger pump. And if you look underneath this one, it's like a plastic veined pump. Not sure how it works. Pretty feeble. And if you look under the Warbro, proper metal G rotor style pump. So with these wall bros you get a like a little mesh that goes onto the bottom of it 
and you get various rubber sleeves. I'm not even 100% sure what the original fitment of these pumps are. I guess they're pretty much universal. What I do know though is not a straight fit into this. You've just got to make it work. Like so. And there's a little spring clip. Sort of like a serrated washer. That once you clip it on, it doesn't come off. It's quite a small socket. Alright, that's on. That's not going anywhere. Now I know from because I've fitted one of these to the to the UAS, well I modified it for the UAS. The sock has to be bent up this filter. Now I don't think that's gonna be a problem. I'm sure if it is, you guys in the internet will let me know. Put this little jacket over here because I I know it's a bit loose in there. This thing I'm really not sure of. I put it on the UAS one, it's a real poor fit. What does it offer? It just gets in the way. I'm leaving it out. Alright, I've tried doubling that over to fill that gap. Let's give it a go. Happy with that. I'm not sure if you can see that then, but I've got the filter sock basically over that side. So the back of the pump is now butted up against that. So it's now sitting at a nice level angle. There she is. Where's the pump fitted to that? Now to make up the little hoses, which go between that and this. Got a little bit of fuel hose. Ah, oh, this, this is something I didn't experience doing the US one. This is fouling on the sock inside, so I need to cut a little bit more of it off. Okay, this fuel hose happens to be about the right size anyway. So I'm just going to cut this little loom down a bit and add two spare terminals to it. Add a section of fuel pipe to go from the return to the one-way valve at the bottom of the swirl pot. Okay, so this is the pump all modified, ready to go in. Shortened fuel hoses, as you can remember, it was about up here. Chopped it right down so it's nice and short now. One thing I need to do is, once I've put it in the tank, is to... I'm going to cut and rebend this, so as it is, full fuel is above the top of the tank. So I'm just going to cut and bend this so it tallies up with the size of the tank. But yeah, here we are. This is a 38 pound Range Rover P38 pump with a about 75 pound wall bro inside it. Uh, I think it's quite a cost effective way of uh, getting an in tank fuel pump. Okay, so this is the hole I've cut. This is where this is going to sit and the pump will go in there. Uh, before I weld this, just been doing a bit of practice on similar size metal, messing with the AC balance and you know, I'm happy with that. So let's get the tank up here and start welding that ring on. Okay, so this is fully welded. I had varying degrees of success as I went round. 
Uh, I couldn't really tell you why some of it looks like crap. Some of it, like that, seemed to pick up some sort of impurity. I don't really know where from. That's a good thing about being like very mediocre at something. When things go right, you don't know why, and when things go wrong, you don't really know what to do to adjust. Put it on. I've been watching some videos recently about messing around with AC balance and AC uh, frequency. Uh, Jesus Christ, that is a very in-depth subject with no definitive answers. But uh, yeah, it definitely makes a difference. And the good thing with my machine, which is a Sherman AC DC TIG, uh, you can save the settings. So that's ideal for somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing. Okay, tank is done. I've just cut off the old fuel return and fuel feed and welded them up. Uh, I'm going to fill it up with water overnight and see if anything leaks out of them two areas. Uh, and for now, moving on to this, and this is the fuel level float. So as you can see, that's full. So basically I'm going to cut it about where my finger is. Sorry, I'm not. I'm going to bend it about where my finger is. Cut the end off. May change the where the floor is so the full range suits the tank. Okay, so max is there. So there's the mark. Right, let's see how the leak test is going. And the return down here somewhere. Right. Okay then, I've done some wiring and drilling under the back floor of the van. Let me show you. So the tank mounts between these rails up in this void. Uh, this is a drilled and added grommet for fuel pressure, fuel return. This is the wiring for the pump. This is the wiring for the sender. Then I've got it hooked up to the UAS pump at the minute. And what I'm going to do is turn the ignition on and see if it blows up. And it'll also give me a time to check all this out. I know people are going to say that's a bit tight, isn't it? But basically, there's more wiring than I need. The plug sits about dead center. Uh, what it allows me to do is plug it in whilst the tank isn't all the way up. And then by the time I lift it all the way up, there's plenty of slack in everything. Right, I'm going to turn the ignition on. The battery might be flat, but the pump may make a noise. That's the pump running, it works. Right, let's get it in. Time lapse. Okay, just done the filler neck. Uh, if that's all plumbed in, about to pour fuel in it and then give it its first test start. Okay, here goes. First time putting power on with a tank full of fuel. Please don't blow up. That bomb's so quiet. It's so quiet, it actually makes the exhaust sound louder. Amazing. And also, the fuel gauge is reading. It wasn't reading when I was trying to test. Oh my god. That's a fuel leak. Just 
try to reach up, couldn't reach the key. Fuck, 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 fuck. Whoa. Scary. Right, I'm just letting it run up to temperature, making sure it doesn't do anything else weird. Uh, no fuel leaks at the minute, which is good. The fact that it pushed that fuel line off, which was the fuel feed to the rail, just goes to show how little pressure, fuel pressure this thing was making. Uh, it, it has got gradually worse over time. Last time I drove this, uh, it had a misfire on full throttle. That's very lean. Uh, I think it's a testament to the Saab engines that it allows idiots like me to drive them for so long with it would have been lean, wouldn't it? It would have been very lean. I'm an idiot. I think this is exactly the type of camper van the missus thought she was getting when I convinced her to let me buy the comma. Right, let it sit idling off the ramp for a bit. Pretty dry, let's give it a go. It's mad to think the pump is right in front of you and it's silent. What you can hear now is the fan actually at the front. This is what it sounds like now. Now let me just put in a little clip of what it used to sound like. Right, let's take it for a test drive. I'm going to go straight to a fuel station. Squeaky rear brakes. It's not going to be brilliant footage, but uh, let's just go anyway. Okay, I've just chucked 35 litres of petrol in. Uh, the gauge is reading three quarters full. I don't know, it clicked on the pump but I didn't want to force more in. If you've had old cars you'll know that they like to kick fuel back out. Driving it to the petrol station, there's only about 10 litres in it on the way to the petrol station. I had a misfire. Now maybe that misfire is nothing to do with fuel or maybe it was low on fuel. I don't know, we'll find out. Come with me. Just a low boost at the minute. Let's try a bit of high boost up the hill. We're in second. half 10 at night I'm back at the barn I've done too much work to this to accept a partial success partial success being the pump is much quieter I'm gonna chuck some plugs in it now take it back for another test drive here are the four plugs one two three four uh, varying colors chuck some fresh ones in it see how I go Plugs are in, the mandatory two bolts in the coil pack anymore when you're wasting time. They're in, let's go road test it. OK, 
okay, test drive complete. I am back at the house. The misfire is definitely gone. The performance as well is much improved. I'm not 100% sure if it is as fast as it should be. It feels it feels slower than the 9000. It's very difficult to get a feel for what a van like that should should accelerate like. You know, it just feels totally different to a car. Uh, but rolling on in second and third gear, it was wheel spinning. It is wet out. Uh, so performance is definitely better. I'm not going to blow it up quite yet. Trying to see what it does on the draggy. As you can see, impending house move coming up very quickly. And I need the van for part of it. Rowena would not be impressed if I blow the van up. Trying to show off to fellow weirdos on the internet. So you'll have to wait for now. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. Um, Overall, I think it's a success. The sound difference between the pump, the old pump and the new pump. That alone for me is worth it. I hated the sound of that pump. Uh, and it was all self-inflicted. Pretty much like everything I go through, it's all self-inflicted. But trials and tribulations of an idiot who likes turbocharging things which shouldn't be turbocharged. But thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.